Well, a massive crowd have stayed behind despite the threat of a thunderstorm, and it still is black with the orange flashes around the sky. But there are 13 athletes out on the track. You can see, normally we talk about the steeplechase being seven and a half laps. It's seven laps plus about 50 metres here because, as David Coleman was saying, the water jump is on the wide outside of the top bend, and that makes it uh, a longer lap. Colin Reitz goes in this, whereas 447 for Great Britain. He's got the uh, European champion, Hagen Meltzer, wearing 474, the Italian champion, Lambercini, wearing 592, a good Kenyan in Kip Kemboy. Maminski's there too, the old stager from Poland. He'll be wearing red and white and 758. And Bakush, the Tunisian, who's uh, been helping uh, Awita in some of his timing over the uh, 5,000 metres. And there's a faller early on. And uh, Colin Reitz has gone down with the Dane, I think, Jensen. Jensen is down and Colin Reitz was clobbered. Colin Reitz has picked himself up, but he's 20 meters, 25 metres off the back of the pack. That's tough for Colin Reitz. Uh, that really was a sad one. Fifth in the Olympic Games, bronze in the Commonwealth, the United Kingdom record holder with a very real chance of qualifying as one of the four here, although it's a tough heat. Now, the uh, Dane Jensen is going to be uh, needing uh, attention and he's in real trouble over there. Disappointed and destroyed. It really was uh, a tough one. It was The Dane got clear. And then coming up, there it is, catches his knee and really does go crashing down. And Colin Reitz is immediately behind him and tries to do a sidestep and in actual fact trips over that leg that stuck out. And the rest managed to get round Colin Reitz, but Colin Reitz, by the time he'd collected himself, he'd gone down, picked himself up, and uh, he's still, oh, seven metres off the back of the pack and he's going to find it tough to get back, Brenda. Well, he is, and they're travelling at about 8.17, uh, 8.18 pace, uh, so it's not, it's not slow, and Colin's got to control himself now and try and catch them gradually, because, I mean, he did, he did absolutely nothing wrong. It was not his fault at all. He landed, and then there was someone in his way, and he tripped over them, and I'm delighted for Colin that he got up because he would have been very angry, and his anger would have lasted a year if he'd fallen in the championships. He's got a difficult job to catch the leading group, but as long as he tries to do it slowly, he's going to have to run the races of his life to qualify here. But I think I think he's going to get in there, he's working. He doesn't seem to be limping, so he's obviously not in too much trouble. And they are beginning to slow a little at the front there, so he's got half a chance. So Kip Comboy has taken the lead. He's taken over from uh, Borger of Norway, who's happy to lead. And 4-7-4 uh, four, four coming up, the familiar figure of Hagen Meltzer. Kip Comboy enjoys front running and he decided that the pace wasn't good enough and uh, Lambrosini is uh, tucking in on the curb he's one of the blue vests there with Meltzer alongside the Soviet athlete uh, is also there and the rest are collecting themselves and as Brendan Foster was saying he's, if if Colin reaches to get pack it must be a slow move back into the pack and you can just see him there Kip Kemboy running wide of the Norwegian Meltzer safely in third Lambrosini is there and the pace is uh, is such a pace Brenner that there is a chance that Colin can get back to it well, it's, it's a little bit slower, but he did work hard to get back there. I think if he could just get on the back of the group and settle down, don't do it, you know, not do anything yet, because there are four laps to go, and there's a, he's got a lot of running him. He's a good finisher. Uh, he's, got a, you know, he's a good miler, and he's run pretty well this season at that event. But I think if he just could settle there now, stay on the back of the pack, but please, Colin, stay out of trouble, um, I think he's got a chance run. Good. Colin Reitz, Hackney Vaughan, New Ham and Essex Beagles, tough character. Just going past one or two tail-enders, having a look to see who they are. Bakush has come into the race, wearing 934. He's wearing red. He's uh, closed up on... Uh, and so is Maminski. Maminski uh, of Poland has just gone past Bakush. They're both wearing red. And the, the Norwegian is going back. Meltzer is there. But Kip Kemboy has dropped the pace. He's dropped it uh, sufficiently for Colin Rees to get right back in this race. And he's up there with the pack now, but picking his way carefully over these barriers. Well, the lap time was about 74 seconds when he closed up, and he's getting into more trouble, and I'm sure it's partly because he's worked so hard to get back there. He's probably a little more tired because he hasn't had the smooth run that the rest of them have, but um, 
I'm, I'm getting a bit nervous again for Colin. Look, he's dropping back there, Ron. And they've got uh, three laps and the rest of this straight to go. And the slower it goes, the better chance Eddie Wedderburn has of qualifying from the first round. Kip Kemboy, Meltzer, Maminski, Bakush, Labruschini, and then uh, the Norwegian who took the early pace, Borga. Kip Kemboy, the East African champion in 85, won the Kenyan trials and uh, is the current Kenyan champion. He's been taking a closer look at Colin Reitz uh, through the uh, binoculars. In fact, he's finding it very hard. Uh, the fall was quite a heavy one. Um, he had to work, and he did it the right way economically to get back with them. But just at the moment when he wants the breather, they've started to speed up, and he's losing touch. And, you know, when you get a little discouraged in a distant race like this and you begin to hurt, then, you know, all of a sudden it can evaporate completely. And I think, I think he's been very unlucky because he was hurdled well, he's been running well, he's been preparing for this championship. And, you know, he didn't, he didn't as I said earlier, he didn't do anything wrong. It was the, it was the, the Danish man who tripped. Tough on Colin Reitz, but he's not going to make it uh, at the moment. Kip Kemboy, Meltzer, Vakush, Lambrashini, Maminski. And the American Brian Dima. Brian Dima just at the back of that pack. Remember, it's the first four plus three. And uh, they go through from three heats. And Colin Reitz must be thinking back to Helsinki World Championships when he collected a superb bronze medal. 27 year old Kenyan has run at his best 8.14, so it's not going to worry him sort of pace, but uh, having got to the front, he decided to slow it down. The European champion, Meltzer, he's done 8.15.85, he's the East German champion, and won a good match against the Soviet Union, and of course he's the 86 European champion. Naminski hanging back with Bakush, they... Uh, Back in fifth and sixth, the two red shirts. And uh, Tommy Eggblum of Finland bringing up the rear of that pack. Dima running wide and getting on the shoulder of uh, Meltzer. Lambraschini just uh, picking his way to the front and he'll get a big cheer from this crowd. They take the bell. And Bakush is off the pace. Ekblom is uh, not going to make it. Maminski's closed up and is running wide. Demo, the American, in blue. He's got to get past. Kip Kemboy buried in that pack. He's got to get himself out. Meltzer goes over the hurdle first. Lambraschini is there. And Kip Kemboy decided to uh, make a little burst down the back straight. 260 metres to go. Meltzer goes after Kip Kemboy. The Italians will be roared on, only four qualified by right. He's tucking in in third, Dima, the American. Bakush coming back into it, Maminski. But there's only 200 and, uh, less than 200 metres to go. Last water jump and one hurdle. It's going to be a battle. Lambrushini goes for Italy, being roared on. Meltzer gets after him, Kip Kemboy, then Dima. Then Bakush and Maminski may be run out of it. And it'll be a long while since he's been run out of the final. The Italian's there. Kip Kemboy goes up to make certain. Meltzer's going to be certain. Dima's going to be there. Lambrashini and Bakush will have to wait on the clock. So too will Maminski and Ekblom is seven. And that was much slower than the other. 8.20.76, so there's still a good chance for Eddie Wedderborn. But how sad to see Colin Reeks bringing up the rear, having a look behind him there, having tumbled over, been battled out of it. He fought his way back to get into the pack, but he's uh, run out of it on time now. Kenboy, good winner of that. And the Kenyans are looking good. Two gold medals in the bag already. Two qualified in the steeplechase already for the final. And one more to come in the next... Uh, semi-final. Lamborghini on the inside takes it easy, Kip Hemboy comes through Meltzer, the European champion in second place Lamborghini third, uh, Dima fourth, uh, but uh, well, you've got a bleed ready for Colin Reitz, I mean third in the world championship last time, I know he's been preparing and saving himself for this one he fancied the chance of a medal, he got one last time, and he, right at the outset, the very, very first barrier I think it was, first or second he's on the floor through no fault of his own. 